Since the year 2000, prison populations have doubled in the United States. Well, here they come again. They heard that things were happening. With mics in front of faces, their lips began to flapping. They talk about world and local news reports. And even Steph Michaels, because she's a doggy whore. Corey says, man, it's a goddamn joke. Corruption is abundant and the POTUS is a host. Stacy says, man, I'd like to act, but Americans are lazier than most, that's fact. So go get a bowl, a spoon, and some cereal, and sit your ass down, it's time for Air Wreck Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking, and thank you for choosing Air Wreck Radio. We'd like to apologize in advance if there's any inconvenient cause, but, uh, we're going down. First day of April in the year 2014. I'm Corey, and I'm the motherfucking Easter Bunny, bitches. And this is uh, episode 50 of Air Wreck Radio. 50, number 50. That's something that we would celebrate, like people keep telling us to celebrate. Except for the fact that in two weeks it'll be our one year, and that's that makes more sense. Much more celebrational to me. But uh, it could still be a commemorative 50th episode, and the reason why it's commemorative is because we're calling it that. Yes. So, welcome to the commemorative 50th episode of Air Rec Radio. What are we commemorating? Um, that we've done this 50 times. Wow. In a row. That's repetitive. Without missing a week. Yeah. More so important uh, is the fact that we've done this 50 times in a row without a break. Like, you think that... We just recorded this on Monday. Well, we did record it on Monday. We recorded it 50 Mondays ago, just like all our shows. We're actually clairvoyant. Yes, and we've just been predicting the future the yes. whole time. Which, you know, we really worked hard to sound surprised sometimes. Uh, some of our news stories tonight might invoke a surprised reaction. Trust us, folks. It's all fake. Theater of the mind. Just an act. I didn't actually feel terrible last week when Otto died. Oh, that sucks. Yes, terribly. Um, anyways, wonderful, fun-filled, action-packed episode for you folks. Uh, me uh, and Stace had a little date this week. Ooh, we oh, went on a date, we huh? Did it's very a, romantic. No, there was a third person, so it was kind of kinky. Yeah, it was like a a fat white guy orgy in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> fat hairy white guys watching a movie. I can't imagine. Two other people that I would le- less like to be related to in a sexual kind of innuendo way. <laughs> than me and good old Buck from yeah, a I podcast. Like, I like you guys both, but the <laughs> thought of your sweaty, naked, hairy asses being anywhere near me freaks me right out. The Air Wreck Radio Podcasts cruise went, uh, went to see Captain America. Captain America. America. The Winter Soldier. Yeah. Or the whatever of the Winter Soldier. It was the Winter Soldier. It was just the Winter Soldier? Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'm not, I don't care about subtitles. Yeah, whatever. Captain America 2. Captain, Got it. Captain Propaganda. Or, well, like, and a glimpse of the future. Um. Well, well, yeah, that's kind of a new theme that's yeah. going on with the, with the uh, movies. So, folks, real quick, spoilers. <sighs> Yeah, okay, yeah, there, there will be spoilers. Be prepared for some spoilers the, here. During the first break of this show. Uh, we'll get the, the the most egregious of all spoilers out of the way. The good guys win. Okay. Oh, oh my. Okay. No, fuck. God damn it. I know. You the, oh, wait, I, I already know. saw it. There goes the suspense. Listen, it's been out for two weeks, and this is the digital now, now, now age. If you ain't seen it, and this is a spoiler, I don't fucking care. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, all right, moving on. Uh, you say propaganda movie, but of course, that's his whole character. His character was invented to be American propaganda. Absolutely. 
<laughs> the whole concept behind him. Yes, it was very present. Um, well, the show, the movie was dripping with it, and I think they did it intentionally. They definitely don't do anything on accident <laughs> in the media these days, Corey. <laughs> anything but, you see is not an accident. I guess what I mean is I I, I felt that they were doing it in a, a satirical as kind satire. of way. Yeah. Uh, some of it was as satire, I thought. Like, um, for example, their big fancy new gunships with the ability to target a thousand people a minute. And the uh, captain was like, that seems less like security and more like tyranny and uh and uh And I won't stand for it by George What's his name with the one eye? Fury. Thank you, Nick Fury. Director Nick Fury. Nick Fury was like, Well, it's perilous times, you know, we gotta we gotta just eat a little shit now and then and put gunships in the sky with the ability to shoot down a million or I'm sorry, a thousand people a minute. They uh when I don't remember who it was they were interrogating, but they were interrogating somebody somebody. And they, when they were rattling off the list of people that might be on the potential targets list, yeah, they mentioned Bruce Banner. Yes, hmm. the Hulk. Yes, yeah. I'm curious because Bruce wasn't able to blow his he- own head off and with a gun in his mouth because the Hulk just spit the bullet back out. What? Yeah, that's the that he used that line in the Avengers is that he tried to kill himself. But before the bullet entered his brain, he turned into the Hulk and spit it back out. <laughs> I didn't see that part of the. He movie. goes, "I tried to end it, and the uh, I put a, in a, in a bullet, and the other guy spit it out." That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Hulk's a badass. So the whole point is that Hulk's indestructible. I want to know what this guy, how the gun, I, like, I want to see that simulation on YouTube now. It was like some fans got to do it for fun. Perhaps it's because of, uh, maybe their plan was, because that was not um, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s plan. That was Hydra's plan. But I want to know what Hydra was going to do if it just pissed Hulk off. I think it would have been <laughs> such a surprise. Like, if you, if Banner doesn't know it's coming, the Hulk can't do anything to stop it. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Who? Fuck, it's a comic book movie. I don't know. I, that's why I say I wanted to see it hit Hulk, or hit Banner. Hulk wakes up, pissed. And just rips the fucking things out of the sky. That would be a fun thing for me to see visually. The whole movie, I was like, where are the X-Men? <laughs> I kept waiting for Iron Man to Where's show up. Where's Iron Man? I yeah, can't. I'm like, any Captain America can't fly. We're fighting airships. Maybe you call in a little help, homie. I was waiting for the same uh, intro that, that he had in the Avengers one, where all of a sudden you just hear his friggin' music playing and he comes flying in to save the day and yeah. wops the shit out of somebody iron man much better hero than captain america much more well equipped <laughs> that's a good answer oh i can throw my shield <laughs> one of my fa- one of the lines i did like in iron man or um, in captain america was when in the very opening when he jumped out of the plane and the one the marine or whatever turned the other guy goes was he wearing a parachute? Yeah. There was some good lines in that no. movie. <laughs> I'm not going to say that that movie was crap, Corey, but I definitely almost left the theater two times during that movie. What were the two instances? Um, both times were during heavy police-involved gunfire, gunfights. Oh, God, yeah. I don't think that... Um, first off, if you're going to have a gunfight in a movie, it should be bloody like a gunfight would be because we don't need to uh, homogenize gunfights. I can't, I, you're right. You're absolutely right. We don't need right. to trick ourselves into thinking it's this clean, victimless thing. There were bullets going everywhere. Civilians were all over the place getting killed in that movie. Now, was it Man of Steel-style body count? No. But that's a, that's a running theme in all superhero flicks, is that there's always an innocent bystander count that nobody mentions. Yeah, well, it pissed me off, especially when there was uh, guys dressed as cops shooting military-style weapons. Now, I know that they weren't real cops because it's a movie, and also because in the movie they weren't real cops. It said so. (laughs) But we shouldn't become acclimated to the visual effects of seeing police officers shooting military-style weapons in crowded areas. Um, hmm. We don't use military tactics in the police. It's not how it should be. After the Boston bombing, there's a little tie in there because of the, the, the week it is. Yeah. I said something about, I understand needing to search for this guy, but that the um, armored vehicles with armed men, with, I mean, fully automatic weapons wearing tactical gear, hanging off the side of armored vehicles, rolling and locking down entire blocks of a major American city. I said something about that being... 
disturbing. Yeah. Unnerving. Mm-hmm. Something, something, yeah. I said something like this. And people call me paranoid. You know what else was disturbing and unnerving about that scenario? Um, other than the obvious uh, after effects of a, of a brutal bombing. Well, of course was, the bombing was the worst part. Right. So let's get past that. <laughs> we, that's not what I want to talk about about yeah, it. Yeah, I got you. Um, because that's obviously, that's bad. That's bad, and you need to catch those people. Absolutely. <coughs> um, there was a time on the news... Where the news anchors were questioning openly whether this guy deserved to have his Miranda rights read when he got captured. The two guys. Um, well, well about not, that. Here's a line to walk here. Because uh, I can, no, there's not a line to walk. What's the line that you? What line do you think so that I may refute it without stepping on you? Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Uh, I can see where somebody might feel that a terrorist act excludes you from having the same rights as other criminals. But on the other hand, we do claim to be a due process and justice-based country. There's, There's the key. You don't have the same rights as other criminals. You have the same rights as other citizens. Oh, Innocent until proven guilty, you have the rights... Of Miranda. Okay, hold on a second. I did not. And uh, excuse me for being ignorant, but um, you ignorant fuck. I know. <laughs> were, they were both citizens. Uh, I, I, it's important. I believe they were both immigrant citizens. Okay, well, it's, as long as they were citizens, I don't care how they be, got their citizenship. In answer to that question, Corey, uh, this is from Boston.CBSLocal.com. As a clear, this is from last year. As a clear picture emerges of the brothers suspected in this week's Boston bombing marathon, or Boston marathon bombings, rather, we have learned that one of those men became an American citizen just last year on September 11th, 2012. Which one? Because one was dead. Oh, it's only don't only make one. me say this guy's name. Was it was a Jokar? Dzokar. He was one that was a citizen. Sarnave. You win. Okay. Okay. That's the one that that's the one who's alive. He had become a citizen uh, on September 11th, that's, the year before. That's the one that would have had his Miranda rights read to him, not his last rights. So, he was a citizen. Okay. Re- regardless of anything else. Then he had right to Miranda. He had a right to Miranda, and there was a question in the media as to whether or not this guy had the right to Miranda rights. Um, but I could see the the feeling that one would have to not want to give him that. The feeling. Uh, the thing about laws is that they're there so that we don't be ruled by our feel- feelings like a bunch of stupid monkeys. Um, that's what those rights are for. Okay. I uh, You turned me. You turned me right over. Not that I was necessarily firmly planted, but you still turned me right over to your side. Now, that's not exactly why I almost got up and walked out of Captain America. Oh, but, but I but. guess it had something to do with it. <laughs> what was the other instance? Uh, it was another gunfight with not enough blood. Um, I just uh, Captain America said something that I did not like. He said, "If you're going to fight a war, you got to wear a uniform, or you better wear a uniform." Maybe he said, "I don't know." And it okay. was a lighthearted line, but Captain America to reference him going back for the original suit. Let me give you a little. Piece of history here, Captain America. You uh, know, part of the reason why the American uh, colonial army was able to beat the British army? Camouflage. Because we didn't wear bright red shoot-me-now uniforms. You know why we have such a hard time picking insurgents in places like Afghanistan? Because you can't tell who the Because they dress the are. fucking same. If you're going to win a war, leave your uniform at home. More than that... But he's full of honor and respect and courage and all those great the, American values. The driving point of this movie was that there is a big evil corporate overlord who's going to usurp your rights and shoot you from the sky. And there's nothing you can do about it because you don't have superpowers. You don't need heroes to fight your battles. People need to fight their own battles and be aware. I didn't like the moral of this movie at all. Okay. I did not think... However, I thought it was a pretty entertaining movie. 
Had I not just read Chomsky's Essentials Understanding Power, I probably would have enjoyed the movie a little bit more, but my mind, I'm going to I'm going to admit it, my mind might not have been in the right place for an American propaganda film, which is what we went to watch. Yes. And you asked to come to. Yeah, no, I you know what? I'm not saying I didn't have a good time or enjoy the movie, but I definitely became angry two times during the movie and almost left. Uh Well, I don't know, maybe maybe to say that you had it provoked an emotional response. And you almost left and not didn't. Maybe in some weird way the movie did a service. It wasn't enough to offend you before you walked out. You still got your ten bucks worth. Well, arguably. That remains to be seen. But any movie. It's ten dollars for a movie. Are you kidding me? Whatever. Yeah, and then another fucking ten or more. It was like fourteen bucks for a medium popcorn and a small soda. Notice neither me or Bill had either of those things. I know, you cheapskates. <laughs> fucking, I saw you guys reaching into your purse for candy. Oh, uh, well, no, me, I brought nothing. <laughs> Bill sneaks his stuff in. Yeah. That's Bastard. all right. That's a perfectly legitimate thing Good to do. Good for him. I'm, hap- I'm happy that he does it. Good for him. Um... I forgot where it's going. Oh. I don't know where you were going. You hadn't uh, gone there yet. I think it just... Okay. I was willing to give it like a good... Out of out of a movie, I was willing to give it, for an, in its class, an 8 out of 10. I think it just... I think it just took a number from it. I think you just argued me down to a 7 out of 10. Honestly, it was a good movie. For, for what, for it, what, what, it, was. what for a, it was. For a comic book superhero movie... Bingo. I'm not going to beat it up... For pissing me off because it was full of a bunch of American propaganda, rhetoric, bullshit, and programming to make you think that gunfights are clean things. Sometimes I forget that other people lack critical thinking abilities. Yeah. So I don't think about how offensive that really is because I'm like, well, it's a movie. We all get what's going It's a propaganda flick. People we take- all know what's going on. But I forget that people don't know it's a propaganda flick. More than that, people take little kids to that movie, and little kids see police acting that way, and they think that's how police should act. That is not how police should act. Not one <laughs> single official in that movie behaved the way an official should behave. Not a one. Not a one. singular sensation. Quick, a perp. Shoot. <laughs> Many times. Into a crowd. Doesn't matter. It's funny. A lot of the complaints after. Uh, Captain America, I decided last minute to catch a late dollar movie. Three bucks for mm-hmm. the, you know, matinee or whatever, the yep, late night. Yep, whatever. you ditched your boys and went and saw a different movie without them because you're a prick. Yeah. What'd you see? <sighs> Robocop. Ooh, Robocop. I was like, sweet. You I loved <laughs> Robocop as a kid. You have 30 seconds to comply. Now, I went into this realizing that Robocop won, like the original. Yeah. Wasn't a great fucking movie. Like, no, I get it. But it had its, like, it was what it, it, it was. Had, I really liked the dystopia. It worked for what it was. In, uh, that was portrayed in RoboCop. I liked the irony, the, the sense of humor that it was portrayed with. The fake drug, the nuke there, and all that. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything about that movie was portrayed. I, You know what? It, it, if I watched it now, I'd have the exact same problems with RoboCop as I did with Captain America, except for the fact that it was all portrayed... It was all given to you with a sense of irony that Captain America didn't really have. There was certainly a lot of shooting people without any blood. And I didn't really even notice that until you said it about Captain America. Yeah, man. There was a lot of shooting people and no blood in this movie. Captain America got shot in the middle of the body. And there was like just a tiny little red stain. Right. And he got a a gut shot. Right. (laughs) Now I get it. He's a super soldier, I guess. that. Okay, but we all saw Reservoir Dogs. (laughs) <laughs> and they cover the entire back seat of a large sedan with gut wound blood. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wasn't yes. that Pulp Fiction? No, those were dogs. Where they went and took him to uh, the fixer there. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. That was after they blew the guy's head off in the back of the car. In Pulp Fiction. In Pulp Fiction. Okay. All right. In Reservoir Dogs. It's been a while since I saw Reservoir Dogs. In Reservoir Dogs, the bank robbie goes wrong, and shit, I should get my fucking man car taken for not remembering their names does that movie end with a uh mexican standoff yeah okay yeah I, I haven't seen that movie in in a very long time because i don't watch a bunch of movies and anyways harvey Keitel, dr- the half the movie is harvey Keitel dragging some fucking bleeding asshole back to the hookup spot and he's a fucking cop and all right 
I, I, I can't remember their names like Mr. Pink. I, I know who Mr. Pink was, but I can't remember who what his name was. How was RoboCop? Terrible. Oh, no. Fucking awful. <laughs> Why? Fucking awful. How could RoboCop have been, like, was it awful like the first, Terrible. the originals were awful, or was it awful no. in like a particularly awful way? It wasn't way? awful in a quirky 80s movie kind of way, and, you know, and it just didn't hold up to the, you know, the visual effects and shit. It was just awful. The story writing was, oh, okay, Michael Keaton was pretty good. Michael Keaton? Yeah. Was RoboCop? No. Oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> He was, uh, you know, the, the the worst Batman ever. He was the boss of Omnicorp, the bad corporation. Oh, Robocop. all right. Oh, he'd be good for that. Okay, uh, yeah. He was he was very good at that. The rest of the movie was fucking terrible. The guy who did Alex Murphy, maybe not so bad. Well, how good or bad can you really be to but, be RoboCop? Yeah, he, I talk like a robot. I don't need to act at all. But like the wife and kid were half the movie and in oh. the original they have very little to do they he moved on. Yo, you know who'd be a cool you know who I would like to see play RoboCop? Mm-hmm. The dude that played uh Kenneth on 30 Rock. Uh because you've never seen 30 Rock, he was also Fix Thank it you Fe- for reading <laughs> the blank face. He was also Fix It Felix. All right. <laughs> uh, at least like and there was all set up, no payoff. Really? I mean, the payoff, the climax scene was terrible. That sucks. He fights two of the big rover ones. I don't know their names. Two of them? What? They're like, hey, we can CGI this. We'll put two of them in there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that stop motion crap. We'll double up. <laughs> he still winds up losing the, the robotic arm, but keeping the one that for some reason they keep one human hand. For no fucking apparent reason. Oh, that's so he can still beat off in Kentucky. <laughs> that's what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> they always leave this guy one human hand for no fucking reason. Yeah, in Kentucky, it's illegal to use a uh, uh, mechanical device to pleasure oneself. Does a flashlight count as a mechanical device? Nothing actually moves. If it has batteries. Nope, sure doesn't. It's a rubber sleeve. Then you a got a cheap flashlight. Would you make your own of it? A toilet paper tube and a Wegmans bag? I didn't think flashlights came with batteries. Like, I don't, I don't, think, I don't, I don't think... know enough about flashlights. I'm pretty sure I'm they married. don't. That means it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. So uh, My wife listens to this show. I can't say that and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overacted, underappreciated in the blood value. Uh, the storyline was fucking terrible. I hated the wife and the kid in it through half the thing. I hated the fact that he never like lost the memory and had to fight the programming to get it back. He always knew what his wife it was like. He was in recovery, calling them on the video phone. I love you. In comparison, now let me ask you something. Fuck you. It was terrible. It, let, I want to ask you something so that I know how terrible it was. Take all three, uh, Toby. Maguire, to- Toby, Toby Maguire, Spider Man. No, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Take all three of those Spider Man movies and count them as one thing. Was RoboCop better or worse? Okay, first off, I didn't even see the third one yet. Oh my god, Corey, that's the really terrible one. You I know. are. Oh, I was gonna. Oh, so that really ruins where I was so going it because I was going to ask. Bell curve. I was going to ask if RoboCop did a song and dance number at any point in the movie because if he didn't. That it was better than the Tobey Maguire uh, Rob- uh, Spider-Man movies. No, but they did do a lot of just shutting the fucking guy off. Like, apparently throughout any point in this movie, you could just shut him the fuck off and he lies down in the street. Or in the middle of a rice paddy field in one case for no reason. At, at rice paddy field? But they built... They, what, they sent him to bitch. Korea? Yes, they built him in China. Well, that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> great. Now they're going to have a million of them for half the price. <laughs> And he gets he, he wakes up, figures out he's a fucking cyborg, and freaks out and breaks out. Why do I have one human hand? I must be a cyborg. <laughs> That's what I think every morning until I realize I still have two human hands. Then I'm like, oh, oh, not a cyborg. Or Luke Skywalker. Damn it. Yeah. Well, he did have one metal hand, so that makes you a cyborg. Uh, yeah. yeah, so they just shut him off, and he falls into like the water of a rice paddy. His father was a cyborg, too. I think that makes him half cyborg already. God damn it. Um, <laughs> but he wasn't a cyborg 
when he was conce- when Luke was conceived, he didn't become a cyborg till after that. You don't know that. Yes, I do. I watched the movies and read books. No, shit. you weren't there, man. That was a that was a representation of. Oh, a- thank you, Ken Ham. I you're wasn't there. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, that was the RoboCop. It was not worth my three dollars. Again, the only three dollar movie I ever wanted my money back from. And I will say that Captain America was worth the ten dollars, but as much as any movie is, man, it it just made me mad a couple of times. And it wasn't Captain America's fault. It wasn't really the movie's fault. It was just. I'm sick of seeing clean gunfights. It's gunfights are messy, and we shouldn't think that they're not. I uh, the Captain America man. You know what really like threw me for a loop, and I just remembered this. What? And I know we're going. We're, we're, we got to wrap up here. Oh, that's all right. But uh, you know what threw me for a loop was the fact that in the fifties or the forties, the German doctor managed to create artificial intelligence, store his entire yeah. brain capacity and databases on a bunch of reel to reels yeah <laughs> and created an algorithm that was encrypted so tightly shield in 2014 couldn't decode it that was a little far fetched <laughs> but i'll give it up to nazi super science on that <laughs> that i can believe and friends you can believe this we will be right back finally a show for the people Men of such sensitivity and caring. And I'm sorry to any of our black listeners. We have black listeners. Men of such professionalism and style. Clearly I fucked up. That's what it looked like when you were in control. (laughs) (laughs) Great, now shut up. Men of integrity. I was more worried about midget porn, but you have a good point about, you know... <laughs> I was trying to be, you know, to reach the broader audience than, than the... I don't do that. And men of courage. You fucking kidding me! <laughs> oh my god, we're terrible at this. <laughs> it can only be... Air Rack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Air Rack Radio. It is time for Corey to say <laughs> something that he had said that he wanted to say when we went to break. Which and now it, over to you. It did not happen naturally at all, so just start over and go into the fucking headline news. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It's time for headline news. Headline news. Tonight in the headlines, the headlines be a Kraken. What do you think we ought to do first, Corey? Like the Kraken? No, not like the Kraken. A Kraken. Like they are about the action of cracking. Oh, crack a lacking. Like a verb. Gotcha. No, All right. Not crack a lacking. That's something an ass says in a computer animated movie featuring an ass and an ogre. Crack a lacking. I think I just named the show. <laughs> I think this episode is going to be called Something an Ass Says. <laughs> um, who's, and, which is anything Stacy has said ever. Hey, you know what we should have done before we started? What should we have done before we started? Just decided on the structure which we were going to do all these new stories? I think that would have been a good thing to do. It would be called show prep. Listeners, we're would, not famous for that. Would you like to hear the first ever podcasted Feature of paper, rock, scissors to decide who starts a news broadcast? <laughs> you would. I don't, I don't want to be part of doing it. <laughs> Too bad. The listeners have voted, Corey. Let's go. One, two, two three, three, shoot. Two. Ooh, I should have. No, you got it. We're not doing two out of three. Oh, I thought so. No, uh, Corey played rock. I played scissors. Corey, the news floor is your floor. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I think we should start by zipping over to Chicago. Chicago. Yes. The Windy City. All right. From the Guardian News, Monday, April 21st, 2014, Chicago police face overwhelming gun crime as 45 people shot over the weekend. At once? (laughs) Were they featured in the filming of Captain America? Were they extras? (laughs) Or in RoboCop? No. No. No? None of that. 
Uh, a senior Chicago police officer said that parts of the city are being overwhelmed by gun violence. After a weekend in which nine people were shot dead and at least 36, including six children, were wounded. Ronald Holt, the commander of Chicago's Police Department Special Activities Division, said that the city was witnessing fratricide among the young men who had become to believe that the only way to resolve a conflict is to get out a gun and go shoot to kill. Uh, listeners, a public service announcement from your friendly Air Rack Radio. You shooting, don't represent me. <laughs> shooting people is not a constructive form of conflict resolution. Really? I'm pretty sure. Huh. Yeah. I need to reevaluate everything I stand for. Yeah, something has to change in my <laughs> life. How many people <laughs> were shot? Uh, 45. 36 wounded nine dead jesus and these are like this wasn't like a mass shooting shooting these were this was just gun crime throughout the city one guy two guys at a time so maybe a stray bullet here stray bullet there that's generally how children get shot it's either children shooting children on accident because they were playing with a gun that's a, a quick statistic for you four in five of every one of those shootings resulted in an injury rather than a death Chicago, if you're going to be shooting up the place, might I recommend you learn a little gun control? Yes. Hit your mark the first time. Yeah. There were any of these people, people that were shot twice in the same shooting? Don't have that information for you. Like, or in two separate shootings over the weekend. Did, like, one homie get released from the hospital and be like, Ow, I got shot again. What the fuck? Not my weekend. <laughs> I don't know, but I could see where that would skew the statistics. That fortune cookie was right as fuck. Wouldn't that be some harsh shit? You get <laughs> shot over some gang shit or whatever. You get out the hospital. You step one foot in off the curb and bam, 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 shoot your ass again. Yeah. Uh, to put things in context here um, in a completely unfair way, there are 2.7 million people in the city of Chicago. 45 of them got shot separately this weekend not like a mass shooting 45 of them got shot se- like in separate, in separate in small instances. instances that is a terrifically Staggering. small percent Corey, would you like to know before we go further what percent that you is you can give me the percentage you can go ahead and give me the percentage in a city with a population of 2,715,000 45 people is roughly Point zero zero one six five seven. Uh, we'll call it two thousandths of the population. It's really uh, seventeen ten thousandths of the population. It is still a ridiculous number. Of forty five is too many for one weekend, especially being it, that it wasn't like a shooting where forty five people were shot, well, but which may- is also too many. But this would be a different story. Yeah, it would be a much this different would be story. A much it, different story than just general. I don't even know there, how, to describe, how to describe this. Were these situations all by different shooters too? Like this wasn't one shooter who shot forty five. people. No, and, I mean these are small instances of one, two shooters, one, two victims. Some gun violence happened here and there and there and there. Yeah, the the story the story is that there are forty five separate cases. Of gun violence. I yeah. like that's exactly how this should have been worded, but the news didn't word it that way. We figured it out for them. And all 45 th- cases of gun violence. All of the news stories that you're going to hear about this are going to be about what we need to do about gun violence in this country. But none of them are going to be about what set the stage for the, for the gun violence. Like what made people want to shoot at each other? Because it's not a natural state of human beings to want to shoot at each other. You're not allowed to have your guns, but we're not going to do anything about the poverty that drives this violence. Right. Guess what? When you take the poor people's guns away, they're going to stab people. It's, 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 you don't need a gun to kill people. And again, and again and again and again, and I don't like getting into this because it just makes me mad and I can't be constructive when I get angry. You wouldn't like talking to me when I'm angry. Criminals are going to get the fucking gun anyways no matter what laws you make more importantly that's why they're called criminals they already break 
the law. Law Law-abiding citizens, however, are going to follow the law. It depends on what the law is at any given point. Because those are very subjective these days, Corey. Well, I got to maybe start to I want to I you. just want to give you a, just a counterpoint because I like your point. It's not I'm not going to evaluate the the point that you just made that um criminals will get the guns. They don't listen to gun laws. They don't need law they are already breaking laws. You're right. But so are you and so am I daily. I speed regularly. I speed. I'll admit to it on the on the on the podcast here. Uh folks, I like to go fast. I do. I really. I got a fast bike, and I like to go fast on it. But that is a criminal activity. And going from your logic, if you're already a criminal, I mean, and I mean at the bare balls breakdown of the. Oh broadest, my God! Is this the bare balls the breakdown? Broadest stroke of what you're saying. Oh my God! Is it? But. I'm going to go the broadest stroke because I, I don't want to argue innuendo or, you know, little minutiae about it. You know what I mean? It's so I don't disagree with you, but I think it's more important to talk about the fact that people don't want to break laws. Can they I, don't. Can I reword my statement to fit your criteria? I don't know. Can you? Or yes. did you mean may I? That's a good point. May mm. I? Thank you. No, Doc. Superman's a good point. That was a well point. Thank you, That's teacher. not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. And if you correct, keep correcting my grammar, I'm going to smash you with a computer. Whatever. Lord knows we have enough electric screens around this freaking place nowadays. Which apparently go bad. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I, they absolutely do, especially these bad boys over here I'm pointing to the television. Meanwhile, in headline newsland, <laughs> <laughs> which we wandered off of for no reason, um... Uh, we were into gun control off of this story. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to m- yeah, correct my do. statement. I was kind of <laughs> catching myself back up to where I was. I got lost for a minute. Uh, Meanwhile, back in headline news. If you're newsland, already willing to break gun laws, yes, you're going to be willing to break even stricter gun laws. That is a very well fined point. You got it. There we go. That, that should gets fit it your down. criteria nicely. I have and nothing still, to say about that. And still kept holds my point. Except for, why is it that you want to break gun laws? I didn't say that I did. I think you did. Oh, I don't think I said that I at all. I don't think you said that at all. I, in fact, I was going to argue with you because I don't... I mean, I'm not saying that I never speed, but I'm not like intentional like I speed every day. I'm actually kind of a granny grunt. No, I know. Grunt. You're an absolute pussy in a car. I'm kind of a granny grunt. I, a what? Granny grunt. A granny grunt? Yeah. But, 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 but. I just put along in my little car. Yeah. Do the speed limit. You know what? I do I, 510 over, so depending on the situation. Folks, you're listening to Air Rack Radio with <laughs> Stace and Granny Grunt. And Granny Grunt. <laughs> uh, and, and the one law that I can think of that I actively break on a daily basis is so benign that most law enforcement officials don't consider it illegal, even though there's a law written against it. Are you talking about every time you go to Tennessee for sodomy? I... Don't know how I walked into a Segway that hard, but let's go to Tennessee. Why? Nothing? It's because there's sodomy there. No, it's illegal in Tennessee and 13, 12 other states, even though the uh, the uh, Supreme Court uh, said that that was unconstitutional about several years ago. Uh, still 12 states. I don't have this story. I just had read it and decided it wasn't uh, really prudent because it was about changing... Sodomy laws in southern states really aren't, like, that's not what's wrong with this culture. There are better ways to get to the, the root of the problem. Apparently there's been a bunch of prostitution arrests at Henrietta for rub and tugs. Uh-oh. 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 And that's uh, bullshit. I believe it was Emerson Thor from UndertheSkin.tv's Monday Medicine that uh, posted on my Facebook something from channel, I think it was, no, it was Kimberly and Beck posted it and he commented and shared it. About the, the, the prostitution ring. Could we never say that name? <sighs> well, you can beep it. Again on our show. You should. You should You should just like beep out the I in the first word and the middle couple letters in the second one. I'll make it sound like you said a curse word. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote and I read it and I wrote a diatribe on it and it, about um, how dare these men 
choose to spend their money and time in a way that they see fit. And furthermore, all these women feeling entitled to do with their bodies as they want. Uh, yeah, how a, about this? A free society cannot stand for all these displays of, uh, or uh, exercises of personal freedom. P.S. Thank you, Kimberly and Beck, for once again proving that regular radio cannot uh, provide original and unique content. Oh, that show. I and, don't want to talk about that. Show. I don't want to talk about other shows on the radio on our show. I, I just. I'm smashing like, them. I'll take their. No, you can. And I have an opinion, too. <laughs> But I don't want to have it here. You don't have to. You my, can. My I'm views not do not here. represent the total views of Air Rec Radio and Air Rec Radio Podcasts. However, myself, I think they blow. And I said right on the thing there that podcasting and web shows are the future of radio. And I want to say, uh, real. I want to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I want to say real quick that it's not because I'm afraid to say something radio people might hear on a podcast. It's because if I'm going to say something about you... I will say it right to you if you're interested to know it. I don't think they are, but I would hate to sit here and talk smack about something I would happily tell them to their face. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they're bad people. No, not at all. I'm just saying that I don't like their radio show. Sorry. Personal opinions are, are what they are. It's not There's lots my of people that do. Show. There's lots of people who do. So, what do I know? What do I know? Moving on. Nothing? Did you hear that um, in Portland, Oregon... Okay, we're going to Oregon. A, uh, a teen urinated into a public... Uh, a public... A reservoir? reservoir. Water reservoir? Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Um, a public reservoir. Like where the where, where the drinking water comes from? Yes, one of those things. Okay. My gut instinct was to go, well, sometimes you got to go. But on second thought, this guy's kind of a prick. What a pricky thing to do. He could have pissed pricky. on the sidewalk it's next to the reservoir. Like do. he didn't need to piss into the reservoir. That's that's true. <laughs> that's a pretty pricky thing to do. Honestly, Mark. homie, this is America. You could have pissed in a building. <laughs> we have toilets. We, but even like a tree, a tree, a fine. The photo, the security photo of this kid pissing into this thing suggests that there was probably a bathroom nearby because it's like a well-lit walkway. Something suggests to me that there was probably alcohol involved there's, in this. There's actually somebody else walking by in this photo. <laughs> and the evidence just keeps adding up. Um, The story uh, from Al Jazeera.com. This Ugh. is the American Al Jazeera. The city of Portland, Oregon, is flushing 38 million gallons of drinking water down the drain because a 19-year-old man urinated into an open reservoir early Wednesday morning, city water officials said, prompting... I read that with the completely wrong inflection. I, I, that really did come together nice and smooth, I hope you... You read that like peanut butter. <laughs> you read the ingredients. <laughs> Nice cyborg acid. What the fuck is that? Anyway, dude pissed into a reservoir with 38 million gallons in it. 38 million gallons, okay. Of water. And he pissed a maximum of 16 ounces. The tops. I think that's uh, that's a pound of piss. I don't think you actually piss 16 ounces. I think if you piss 6 ounces, that's the doctor's going to be quite satisfied with that sample. Um, human bladder holds about 14 ounces on average. You can look it up. I don't want to. I believe that. Do you piss you can, it every time? You can, No, you have to be full. Yeah. And you can, people who do stretch their bladders. For example, people who drink a lot usually end up holding more than 14 ounces in their bladder. I, I can do 20 ounces. I filled 20 ounces before when I was drinking. Good for you. Well, I'm saying <laughs> 20 ounces of flu. Let's say it's There's fucking no, 20 hurry. ounces. I don't really think you need to brag about that. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Are you sure? It sounds like. Okay, maybe I'm bragging. It's fucking good. It's good I mean, for me. I'm not bragging, guys, but I have a trophy of me hanging an arc. <laughs> this is how fucking. Hashtag, into a one gallon jug that I filled up. Hashtag my continuing awesomeness. So anyways, this guy pisses 14 ounces of sterile. Ster uh, perfectly potable drinking urine. And, I, and if he had been <laughs> drinking, it was probably mostly water in the first place. Yeah. 
And the city of Portland flushed 38 million gallons of drinking water. Because he piddled? Because he, yes. Because he, he took a wee? Now, <laughs> here's something you might not know about reservoirs. They have open lids. Now, here's something else you might not know if you're a complete fucking moron, or if you're just a normal person that hadn't really thought about it. Or this is your first time listening to our show. Welcome, new listeners. Birds don't give a fuck <laughs> what they're flying over, and geese don't give a fuck what they're landing in. If you're drinking the water, you're drinking geese feet. You know what geese do? They poop while they're walking. I think it's pretty likely they also poop while they're swimming. And birds, like lighter birds, use poop as ballast. And yeah, birds in the that fly just poop anywhere. They don't give a damn. They use it so, as ballast. They don't. So they, they don't can, give a fuck. It's a weight thing. We can have all this, you know, animal waste. And I'm not. And I mean, here's the other thing: other animals get in that water. You think there's not fish in a reservoir? I don't. I think there's definitely fish in a reservoir. No, no, there's not fish you in don't no think fresh so? water. No, I know there's not. It's a. It's not. It's an enclosed thing. It's not an open stream. I'm gonna have to edit it's that. It's enclosed out. water. Because I, I, I'm inclined to agree. Well, they don't need to be because uh, fish eggs can get into bird shit. Okay. But it, also, it's treated with charcoal filters and chemicals. So I don't All think right. there's fishies in the thing. I'm but just, there might be there duck poop. There could be a fish or two in there. I, I guess it could theoretically I'm happen. not saying populations of fish, but there might be some, a minnow in there. There's definitely going to be frogs. I, I, I definitely insects. Mosquitoes. I meant frogs. That's another four letter F word. You know what another one is? <laughs> Fuck you. And there's no fish in the reservoir. <laughs> God, I hope you leave this in here. Don't well, I'm be absolutely a gonna. <laughs> 30, that's frog. That's what I, exactly what I meant. 38 million gallons. Now, here in upstate New York, we have never experienced a water shortage. Oh, they've said you should probably not water your lawn, but people still manage to have nice cultivated green lawns. Well, if they ask, you should probably not be a and, and, and do nobody it. frowned upon that to my memory, but in California right now, they're going through a drought season so long that well, that's it the might run into next drought season. That's the difference of people getting enough water to survive. That's a little bit different than when we get short. They mean don't water your lawns and wash your cars. Yeah. When California runs run on lo- low on water, it's be- that people are going to die. The glaciers in China and India are drying up, uh, and that's where they get all their fresh water is from mountaintop glaciers. Um, that are that are. That's a nice sustainable program. It has been for the past <laughs> sixteen million years of human evolution. You know, however. Like, the last 200 years of human uh, evolution have... Uh, a little less than 200, actually. We've really, really managed to fuck it up. up Global warming is a myth, Corey. How dare you How dare think both that of just us. because burning shit puts smoke into the air, which changes the way... the way chemistry... Anyway. Chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah, it's basically... <laughs> uh, it's chemistry and earth science. They are the same thing. Just <sighs> one's on a bigger scale. <laughs> Whatever. You cannot possibly run the water authority of a city and think that it is acceptable to flush 38 million gallons because a human urinated into a reservoir. It's it's irresponsible. It's, it's irresponsible. Just pee pee. It, it's, it's what did you call it? Piddle? Piddle. It's, it's, it's just piddle. It's perfectly sterile, mostly water. Piddle. Yeah. Piddle. It's a tiny bit of uric acid that the charcoal filters would have no problem getting rid of. I mean, listen, if you're like, if you're like a trailer park mom with four kids hanging off two hips and a fucking Paul Mall hanging out your mouth, I understand. You know what? I take that back. That mom doesn't really think that a little piddle is gross. Listen. That mom has a better understanding of how not gross a little piddle is. If Jimmy got drunk and pissed in the drinking well, that's a little bit different than this guy getting drunk and pissing in 38 millions of water that is in the process of being purified. No, it was already purified. It was not going to go through any more purifiers except for whatever it goes through from the the final charcoal to the... There might have been one more. The, the article is specific about the fact that this water was ready to drink, in quotes. Yeah. 
but I'm pretty sure it just doesn't go from the open air to my faucet. Well, you, you never see little chunks of things in your, in your, in your water. And you would. So there must be some filter between here and there. 38 million gallons. 38 million <laughs> gallons of drinking water. One person dumped. Pees in it. Now, I'll tell you what. This is one person who happened to pee into it where there was a camera watching. Now, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I guess it's not as wasteful as it sounds because it's water. And even though they dumped it, it's just going to evaporate and rain back down and come. It's not going anywhere. Right. But how much resources and electricity and coal did it take to make that electricity and, and human power but da, 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 to filter this fucking water that we dumped? Yeah. It had already been processed. Take it one step further. <laughs> how much capital There you go. That's did that 38 million gallons cost the taxpayer of portland and the man is going to try to pin it on this kid that pissed in the water that kid pissed in the water peeing is natural water is natural in fact peeing is actually part of the water cycle if you wanted to figure out how to take something that there was a lot of and make money off of it wouldn't an appropriate course of action be to create scarcity? Yes. Now, you couldn't do this like super quickly because people would be like, what the fuck are you doing? But maybe if you did it really slowly over time and kind of slowly you know, spoon fed the people. Little stories about scarcity. Uh, little stories about scarcity. You make little things happen that make it scarce. And then maybe you prep them. Like, the water's not scarce, but that water's not as great as this water. So you can pay for the premium water, or you can have the free water. In and a- then eventually the free water has a base price, and the premium water you know, went up a little bit. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a level have, system Have here. the free water. Or you can oh, pay which, for the premium. by the way, we put polio in. Just to screw with people or something. I I wonder if if this could be part of a a plan. Is Mister Jenkins living in the old factory trying to take over the town's water supply? It's funny you should ask. In a related story, the World Bank wants water privatized. The who now? The World Bank. Um. Ha. Huh. Okay. First off, I just. Let's just preface this with yeah, the most. Would you give me some prefacing reaction, questions? Just a knee jerky reaction thing. Anytime the words "world" and "banking" come into the picture, yeah, you should automatically hear like the bad guy noise from the old radio theater, like the dark music plays. <laughs> that- you should automatically <laughs> think like Illuminati and blood sacrifices. Yeah. You should automatically think just the purest of evil. Now, this might not be a fair assessment. Not if you go to worldbank.org, which I did. <laughs> they paint a very a pretty picture. picture. <laughs> However, <Boy>. I think <laughs> something that sounds like it controls all the money. Um, and my grandmommy. Not just sounds like. <laughs> and my grandmommy told me that money was the root of all evil. If I take the two and the two and I put them together, I usually get the four. That is correct. Okay. So, World Bank, root of all evil, says that they would like to sell human beings that live on the planet Earth water. Well, all right. Uh, To be fair. Now, it's one thing to pay for clean filtered water delivered to your home for a reasonable rate. I get that. It costs 12 bucks a year for your quarter or whatever for your water. But that water, this is the, this, I want to make the Filled fine point. Filled with mind control drugs. I want to make the fine point before we get off. That water is considered part of the public trust. It's everybody's water. You pay for it because it costs some money to get it to you. You pay for the infrastructure. You're, you're covering the costs. Yeah. Of of the it's infrastructure. It's not a profit thing. You're covering costs to have well, good, clean water. <clears throat> There's... <coughs> Sorry. There's at least some profit. And there should be, because you need to attract people to the water jobs. And, and you also got to have a thing where, you know, you got to have a research and development so we can keep getting better at doing the water. Right. And, 
Yeah, there should be some profit there. It should be a profitable endeavor to for the public trust, yes. not for private businesses. The World Bank, folks, if you don't know this, and it's perfectly reasonable to not know this, I didn't know it. Oh, you're not going to call them retards this time like you did for the last thing they might I not didn't, have known? I didn't mean that. <laughs> Listener, I love you. <laughs> Sounds like something I would do, but it wasn't me this time. Ha-ha! About the World Bank. They are not a public trust. They are not a publicly owned firm. They are a giant conglomerate. I mean, I'm, you can probably buy some stock in the World Bank, I guess, if you're like one of the point zero one percent. Yeah, that gives you some real decision making ability unless right. you buy more than like forty percent. Right. Of it. Yeah, you got one stock in the World Bank. Good for you. Yeah, I mean that is it's not going to do anything but appreciate. So honestly, if you can buy bank uh, stock in the World Bank, you should go probably on. go ahead and get on go that order. Do that. Um, Eric Radio does not contone or suggest any kind of investing, and if you lose all your goddamn money, it's not our fault. Yeah, this is not your financial <laughs> advice segment. Um, they're a private conglomerate, a giant corporation that runs... Uh, it's got member countries. They call it a country fellowship. Uh, country? What they mean by that is that um, the members of the bank have citizenships in a bunch of countries, which is just the same as Daimler Chrysler Corp. Oh, so... Or Ford Motor Company. Evil franchised itself. Or General Electric. Or the Disney Corporation. Or any other corporation. They've all got a play in in the World Bank has something to do with that. See, like, I hate naming them because I don't understand how the ladder works. And there's really, at the end of the day, there's probably only like really four companies that actually exist and everything else are owned by. The top ten include Apple, Google, IBM, General Electric, and some others that I don't recall right now. And that's what the people actually know. And the nefarious side of things, it's actually four people sitting around a table (laughs) with a little fireplace in the middle of it. And they cackle evilly in a darklit room. So the World Bank is going to try to tell you that um, it would be beneficial for the public if the water got taken out of the public trust. And what I mean by the public trust is, like, the trees in the forest are part of the public trust. The deer that live in the trees, uh, among the trees, I guess, deer don't actually live in trees. The deer that live among the trees in the forest are part of the public trust. Trust. How are we all? How about we're all part of things that exist on this tiny little rock shape, rock shaped spaceship we're on? Say that five times fast. The, uh, you didn't say it one, one time, time slowly. Well, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> why should I say it five times fast? Because you say you're quite the cunning linguist. <laughs> no, I say I enjoy giving cunning lingus. That's oh, different. Who's cunning? I don't know. <laughs> She's a former lot lizard at a dealership I used to work at. All right. Also a full-time lesbian. All right. That's the only person whose name was Connie I ever knew. Anyway. It was a bad (laughs) joke for an even worse joke. I mean... Thanks for throwing that out there so that I had to feel compelled to give an answer instead of continuing to talk about the ever-interesting World Bank. And that's my fault. (laughs) (laughs) The public trust is what resources are. They are not to be privatized. To give you an example of why they are not to be privatized. Oh, damn it. I was hoping so hard that you were going to have the argument for why they should be privatized. They should not be privatized. I understand, (laughs) but I I didn't think you would feel that way. I didn't think you would have that opinion. I just was hoping that you'd be like, these are what the World Bank says is why this would be good for us. Oh, would you like the counter argument? That's what I, I kind of like. Corey? I kind of want the counter argument first because I feel like us and our listeners already know why Shut this is wrong. Shut up for a second. I'm rich. I don't have to tell you shit. That's why. That's the counter argument. All right. Moving on. This is why the counter argument doesn't get presented because that's what the counter is, argument I mean, is. Okay, is that actually what the counter... Is there no counter argument here other than I want to make money off of you? Um, I guess if you're not a critical thinker at all... I want to just know what the... What what are they at least saying? What does the World Bank say as to why we should privatize the water? 
Other than they had to say right. something other than we did. Okay. Or we'd like. Let to. me field the question for a second. I'm going to need a minute to field this question. So, what the World Bank does is they go into third world countries and they do this because they're a, a puppet for United States interests. So what they do is they go into third world countries, right? And they talk to the leaders of these third world countries and they say, listen, Holmes. Ubuntu? Yeah. Let's call... King let's, Ubuntu? He's more likely he speaks Spanish than anything else, but we'll call him King Ubuntu. You're King Ubuntu and Seems I'm fairly Charles racist. the Economic Hitman. King Ubuntu. Uh, yes, Charles. I would like Best to talk to you about taking an SAP loan. What that is, is um, it's a structural something program. It's, it's an acronym Thank that stands you. for something. Thank you for having all the facts. <laughs> I do have all the facts. They're just not all ready right now. We want you to take this loan, and we're going to build a bunch of infrastructure in your country, and it's going to be terrific for your citizens. What you're going to do with this money is you're going to pay a bunch of private American corporations to come in and build all this infrastructure for your country. And then when the American com- companies leave with the money that we gave you, which, by the way, we're not actually going to give you. We're just going to give them so you don't have to worry about all that paper shuffling. And then we're going to come back with axes and guns and tell you we need our money back right now uh, with a giant interest rate. And it crushes third world countries. Okay. So, Stacy, Corey. Ubuntu. What if <laughs> Ubuntu? <laughs> All right, Charles. Uh, what if? Okay. What if I were to tell you that I could, you know, give you a loan to side and put a roof and some new windows in your house? Uh, would that be pretty awesome? It depends on whether or not I needed siding, a roof, and new windows, which is what it comes down to. So I'm glad you made that analogy. And but don't worry about. D- 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 don't worry about going to the bank and worrying about all that. And you don't even have to write the checks. Are you telling me, Corey, that I'm you would give me take care of it for you? To use a different example, you would give me a twenty thousand dollar loan for home improvements and twenty thousand dollars I could use to go on vacation recklessly with my family and children and bury myself in debt. Yes, this that's sounds a perfect like example. something that happened in the U.S. in roughly two thousand and six, doesn't it? Hmm. hmm. Um, we do this to third world countries. I, when I say we, I mean the World Bank, I, which is a, design, a client state for the United States. It's a designed economic... And by hit. United States, I mean United States corporations. It's a designed economic control means mm-hmm. that got used on the world's largest economy without anybody fucking noticing. Yeah, more than that, it got used on a ton of the world's smallest economies. For- well, people kind of noticed because it happened like gunshots. They fell. They, they were they went, went ten years. <laughs> Did you know that thanks to Chiquita and Dole Corporation's influences, uh, we completely dominated Haiti. Well, where the fuck else am I to get my bananas and pineapples? If you fly over the Dominican Republic and Haiti Island. You can see the difference because Haiti is brown. We okay. destroyed it for industrial farming. Really? Yeah. I did not of know that. Bananas. Chiquita. Chiquita Corporation was behind this. I, I knew Haiti was plagued with poverty. Formerly American Produce, I think, is the name of Chiquita before they oh, changed it to a slightly. Ethic sounding. Yeah. Hey, man, these bananas are locally friendly. No, they're not. Slave labor is what that is. It's it's well, come on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We and me and you talk about shit like this on a fairly regular basis. But pretty much anything that we're going to be able to consume in this country at this point is it somehow the result of or, or has benefited from slave labor of some sort. Even if it's mock slave labor, um uh, hell, I argue from time to time that we are the world's most comfortable slaves in this country. We don't need because to be. you have no reason, you have no need to work other than you need to work to survive, and that seems like it's kind of forced. We don't need to be, but we are. Here's the thing: it 
Uh, to close up, real quick, to close up the uh, the privatization of water story. Oh, yeah, that's where the fuck we were, weren't we? Oh, uh, folks, look what they're doing with fracking. You like fracking? You like all those horror stories about how it causes earthquakes and how fucking communities are destroyed when the, the fracking town co- or when the fracking trucks come through? If if you're all about that, you should probably be all about um, privatization of water. Because hey, why shouldn't the rich be able to tell us when we can have a drink? Well, why wouldn't? They? Why that seems completely legitimate. However, if you're an infidel. And you think that water should be everybody's water? Well, then you should probably pay attention to this. And whenever people talk to you about privatization of water, you should have an opinion that is informed and learn a little bit and realize that you do not want private industries controlling your water. When this country's forefathers set forth to write a document that explained people's inalienable human rights, I think they left three things off the list. Water, air, and sunshine. And I think they didn't re- think of these. I also think Because sex. I didn't think that they ever thought, well, we could probably add that. I also think... Uh, <laughs> I think like that falls under personal freedom. Healthy, uh, consensual, adult sex. But I think that kind of uh, tucks nicely under like personal freedom. I think that too. But there's a discrepancy... You're you're right, and people would you're argue right. that you're absolutely right. I and I'm not going to argue. So with let's it. avoid the argument and say that should be one of the inalienable rights too. A, sure, throw adult, it on there. Hey, man, you're an adult, and some other adult wants to do adult things with you. But if we could, what the fuck's wrong with if that? We could add those four things to the inalienable human rights. I think we'd all be better had been better off. But since that didn't happen, we're just going to have to remind people that it didn't it should the reason why it was left out is because they never considered that it would have had to have been written the fuck down. They didn't imagine that that would happen or they were busy writing more important things down thinking that that would be obviously life, liberty and the pursuit of happy the pursuit of happiness is not meant to be narrowed down constantly. <laughs> you shouldn't be See, what we do with the Constitution is we have spent the last 250 years whittling away at what pursuit of happiness legally is. What we should have been doing... Remember, Stacy, we cannot keep our safety if you want all this freedom. Just saying. Oh, I want to... <laughs> Just... I love you so much. <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think Mel Brooks was a genius in the movie Spaceballs. They had canned air because the, the 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 alien race that he was depicting had destroyed their atmosphere, and it got to the point where air was so scarce they could can it and sell it. Yeah, I think he was predicting the future. Now think about that: if they can can and sell water, why couldn't they do that? Like if water could be taken out of the public oh, you trust. Mean, oh, you mean the premium water, the bottled water? Wait until they start billing you for sunlight. Wait until they start telling you they own that piece of atmosphere, that sun's coming through. And then you get aftermarket companies trying to sell you mirrors to get it from somewhere else. Or like new kinds of TVs that give you fucking sunlight because the, you know, the private Time Warner Cable and Sunlight Corporation says it's going to cost you $70 a month. But Netflix Corporation says, well, we'll give you all of that sunlight and no commercials for $8 a a month. month. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's nine dollars a month, and then you still hear people talk about how they have cable, and you're like, "Homie, the sun is right outside." That's why you shouldn't invest in private water. That's why you shouldn't make analogies wildly, <laughs> because that's what you get. You shouldn't watch cable television because the sun is right outside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Air Rec Radio. I think you should stop right now. What do you mean? Because these people all are getting too big. Well, you know, if... Uh, they're already too big. Why? I mean, they're going to take over everything, and then they're going to dictate what happens in the world. You see how that works? I trust... Eric Radio. More than my government. <laughs> I don't. At <laughs> least when I give don't them be... money, I actually get something in that's, return. That's an, evil cor- <laughs> that's an evil corporation. I don't think all corporations are evil. No, just ones that are too big and too powerful. What makes them so big and powerful? That, uh, I still buy my comic books at First Print Comics. Oh, thank you. Well, then fine. I'm dropping the subject then. You know? I'm, dro- I'm dropping it. I don't care. There's something about... Fuck them. There's... Okay. 
Um, I'm dropping it. All right. I don't need to plug them on our show. I'm going to cut that whole spot out now that you mentioned that. <laughs> Why? They should cause I don't want to plug them either. They, Fuck them guys. They should pay us. You know what? Eric Radio sucks balls. Yeah. You want me to say you don't suck? Fuck you. Give me. me some money. <laughs> pay me. <laughs> That's right. You guys fucking suck. Thank you for listening to Eric Radio and holding through the brakes. Thank you so much for that. Please stay tuned because we are going to have some special announcement announcements coming up. We've got some events in the ruins and the brews. In the ruins. Corey, We're could you please get your going. descriptive words in order? No, I've lost them. I cannot find them. Folks, if you're listening at home, uh, I think it's fair to warn you that the last break was exceptionally long. Exceptionally. For Corey and I, though for you, it was undoubtedly no more than one single fake-ass commercial. As it always is. For us, it's been an hour. Oh, yeah. Well, we had shit to talk about that was, you know, bro code shit. We did. We did. We had some brotherly time to talk about things and imbibe. So, welcome back to the show. Corey? Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to be doing something? Yes, I believe you were supposed to be handing it off to me. Oh, yes. Well, you had a story <laughs> left that was just full of good times and great oldies. Not so much, actually. No, no, no. no, no. Well, um, why don't you regale us with your story of passion and romance? No? Drama and mm. desperation. Comedy and lightheartedness? From the Associated Press. Man dies after being shot at Federal Courthouse. Ooh, none of those things. None of those things. Nope, none you batted zero. This is from Salt Lake City. Defendant Ciel Angelo was listening to a witness describe gang initiation rituals on Monday when authorities said he grabbed a pen. This is a pertinent detail for later in the story. Okay, we're carrying a pen. Grabbed a pen, rushed towards the witness, and lunged at him. All right, let's simulate this. I'm going to lunge at you with a pen and try to kill you. I think that I've no? been in a courthouse, so I have an idea of what a courthouse looks like. And I think that as an average American citizen, everybody who listens to this show has been in a courthouse. I've been in several. Court sucks. Well, court's terrible. If your name is C.L. Angelo, court sucks even more for you. A U.S. Marshal opened fire oh, on Angelo, a 25-year-old Tongan Crip gang member known on the street as C-Down. Yo, C-Down, what's up, nigga? That's funny, because when the, when the cops ambulod, uh, radioed for a paramedic, they said, C-Down, C-Down. C-Down. Completely untrue. Mm-hmm. The U.S. Marshal proceeding over these legal events opened fire on Angelo after Angelo had lunged at the reporting witness with a pen. A pen. He lunged at him with a pen. The distance right. from the defendant's chair to the witness stand is significant. Now, Corey, you've been in a courthouse. Let's paint the picture. Judge is in the middle. All right. Now you're standing at like... Let's say you're sitting in the audience. In front of you is the prosecutor's side to your left and the defendant's side to your right. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. Rule. So to your right in front of you is C.L. Angelo, the defendant. To your right in front of you is the witness about 12 feet out in front of the defendant stand in most courts. Depends the size of the town. Sure, it or whatever, does, but, but it's a, it's at least more than it's, two steps. It's more than the length of an average human body. Immediately next to the witness, who's right there? To the, to the judge. What? To the, the, From your perspective in the audience, who's left of the witness? Left of the uh, witness, your honorable judge Blowhart is the judge that the witness is sitting right next to. On the other side of the witness is the bailiff. General. Somewhere in front of you is the bailiff. Between you and the bailiff is the defendant. In this case, the defendant lunged at the witness with a pen and the bailiff opened fire on the defendant. In a crowded courtroom. In a courtroom full of innocent bystanders. He discharged a firearm in a room full of 
people. Several times he shot Ciel Angelo in front of shocked jurors, lawyers, and courtroom watchers. He died hours later. The shooting turned a new and secure federal courthouse that opened its doors just one week ago into a site of terror and alarm. This is all on the Associated Press Oh, this is wonderfully written. So, all right. Now, let's look at this from an innocent until proven guilty standpoint, which is how we should look at it. All right, I'm all aboard. I'll because play. that's how we look at it when banks are there. We Actually, when banks are there, we look at it as a guilty until paid to look the other way kind of standpoint. So when a, when a poor person who is a gang member, because there are no rich gang members, even not the one. wealthiest gang member is, Don't not, count as wealthy. is not in the 1%. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no. So you're in a courtroom. You're watching this case go down. And this dude jumps over the defendant's booth to get at the witness stand. And the bailiff opens fire at him, perhaps in your general direction. Nobody in the courtroom was injured except for the guy who died, who was actually innocent until proven guilty. I like that little news update. Nobody in the courtroom was injured except for the guy who died. Who was innocent until proven guilty. So an innocent man was shot because he didn't have the opportunity to be proven guilty. I guess the argument can be made that whether it was extreme action or not, he did attempt to... A man armed with a pen pen. was shot several times in a crowd of people by an official trained to disarm people. I agree with you, but I'm just saying... An official who had several other... You think a bailiff doesn't have mace? In the game of mace, pen, handgun, mace beats pen. I like how you put that together. That was fun. Handgun also beats pen, but shouldn't we try mace first? Like Handgun honestly, what was he gonna do? What was he gonna do to the bailiff if the bailiff had just walked over and punched him in the head? Was he gonna pen him? Um, oh my god, he penned me. You're a bailiff. It's your job to get penned, I guess. Well, the some bitch didn't have no taser. This story bailiff, makes me. So bailiff can't get a taser. Maybe he's got a taser, Corey. I don't. That's a legitimate <laughs> question to ask. I don't. Here's the thing. If you're a bailiff, your two priorities aren't stand still or shoot somebody. That's not the two parts of your job. There are more nuances between standing still and, and shooting, shooting somebody. somebody. You know, I would hope that they're, that that applied for all law enforcement officers. I would hope so, too, but I don't know that that's true anymore. But for bailiffs especially, where somebody is there in a suit and tie, all right, did he lose his temper? Yes, that's because he's going to go to jail for a long time. Was it a smart choice? Probably not. Was he certainly involved in a in a uh, robbery? Probably. Have I expressed solid views on what we should do with people with armed robbery convictions? Yes, yes I have. But that's convictions. This was the trial to get a conviction. This man was innocent until proven guilty. But he did not get the opportunity to be proven guilty because he lost his temper grabbed a pen, lunged at a motherfucker, and got shot dead, armed with a pen. Now that you've gotten that off, can I say what I was going to say? Yes. Okay. The argument that would be made is whether or not your interpretation of the weapon is lethal or not. Oh, you could kill somebody A man was attacked with a weapon that could be potentially fatal, and the bailiff, though maybe acting in an extreme manner did, in fact, protect the life of somebody else, or at least intend to. So if you attack somebody with a pen, a bailiff is able to shoot you. Well, what is a pen's primary function? To communicate ideas. Well, I misused it, and it cost somebody to get killed. That is the same as if you use your mouth to kill somebody. A mouth's primary function is to communicate ideas. But if you bite a motherfucker's head off in court... That's a murder, just like with a pen. But if somebody lunges at you with just their teeth, is that a reason to shoot them? It would be picking up a weapon as opposed to the weapons given to you environmentally is not the same thing. That's assault with weapon versus assault. It is true that he picked up a pen to use I'm as not, a weapon. It's just it's, the same as a chair. A chair and a pen are equally innocuous. And it is not If up I to grab you, one to use as a weapon... That's a good point. And it's not up to you to decide the lethability or the, the severity of the weapon. Lethality, I think, is the word. 
It's not up to you to su- the severity of the punishment based on the weapon. It's not up to you. Weapon could be considered. I'm just saying. Being I'm not shot saying dead that I disagree is, with you. Unless you are being shot by a firing squad, being shot dead is not a uh, punishment. Totally agree. Totally agree. Let's not call however, out that fact. However, I totally agree that this man should not be dead for stab, trying to stab somebody with a pen. A quick side note. Being shot by a firing squad is a very economical way to execute prisoners. Yeah, it only costs about an hour of pay for like five guys and one bullet. But we need to be very careful when we execute somebody. I don't know that I'm necessarily for execution or not. I'm still kind of in the middle of Well, this of it. bailiff was certainly for accusing of executing a motherfucker with a pen. How disgusting the American courts have become. This dude got shot for attack. Like, all right, was he in the wrong for attacking somebody with a pen? This yes, isn't how disgusting he was. Okay, God, you know how much I love to bash anything official. This isn't how disgusting American courts have become. No, this, this is, is how, how disgusting. retarding one fucking asshole bailiff is. Mm-mm. Multiply it times a million. This kind of thing happens all over the place in the prison society. More than two million Americans are in prison right now. They all had to go through this process, and they all could have lost their temper and attached, attacked somebody with a pen because it's so easy to lose your temper when you're being sent to jail over, I don't know, falling asleep on a park bench with half a joint in your pocket in New York City. That happens. A uh, quick PSA announcement. Folks, if you're Let's in New York real. City and you have a, a half a joint in your pocket and they ask you to search and frisk, they, the cops approach you to search and frisk, If you have that half a joint in your pocket, empty your pockets except for that half a joint. Leave the half a joint in your pocket and say, Officer, there's a half a joint in my pocket. I can't take it out, but it's there. If you take it out, you're having it in public view. New York in 1978 decriminalized the possession of small amounts of marijuana. Uh, I think it's less than 25 grams. Um, As I knew it, it was... 28 it might be 28 fine whatever half a joint if you got a whole joint i think a a whole joint is less than 25 grams right what do you Uh, think i I would say a whole joint even a good one isn't much more than a gram gram and a half i don't i don't know the metric system (laughs) very well (laughs) (laughs) but i do know that if you're stopped and frisked in new york city stacy 28 grams is an ounce i don't know that i knew not i know it now because you. you told me Oh, see, okay, hold on. In New York City, 28 grams constitutes an ounce, and anything less than that is non-felony, which means non-criminal. No, no, no. But in New York City, the rules might be different. You wouldn't get processed over it. You might get a citation. You get a ticket. But you're not getting handcuffed. And so New York listen. State, anything less than an ounce. New York City, where they have the stop and frisk law. Mm-hmm. If you take that little bit of pot out of your pocket when they say empty your pockets, now you're displaying it openly and publicly, and they can get you for possession. They go around it that way. So pay attention, because this might matter someday to some of our listeners. Tell them you can't comply, but you have it. Don't put it in your hand. Let them take it out of your pocket. You're going to go to jail tonight, but you're going to go home tomorrow, and you're not going to have a drug conviction. However... If you take it out of your pocket, you are going to have a drug conviction. That's possession because you used it. You had it. Having it in your hand is the same as having it smoking in your hand. How fucked up is that? That's why the population of uh, U.S. prisons has doubled in the past 12 years. One of the reasons. Well, it is. It's, you're right. That's one of, the, one reasons. of the, reasons. the reasons. It's because nobody is teaching Americans how to follow the laws. Because the war on drugs means the war on poverty. That is exactly what it means. And all that means is let's lock them up in an institution. That doesn't mean let's solve the problems that lead to the things that lead to poverty. No, they invented problems. They started inventing problems. They Maybe de- that's true. In 1978, Corey, they decriminalized the possessions of small amounts of marijuana in New York City. In 19... No, I'm sorry. In 2002, they changed that with the stop and frisk. They changed it. Now, if you took it out, you could be charged with possession. 
point zero two percent of stop and frisk events lead to a firearm possession, which is the reason they give you. So that's two hundredths of the people they stop. Two out of one hundred. One in fifty of the people they stop have a firearm. Were they going to use it? Who knows? Did they just have it illegally? Yes. Not going to get sympathy on me on this one. Legal guns are illegal guns. Ili- I, don't care I, if you're I agree with you not. completely. This one, I'm. I agree with you. I'll completely. Call me a hypocrite if you want. No, 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 no. no. I agree with you. Illegal Fucking guns. Sign the guest book. Illegal guns are illegal guns, and I agree with you completely. But does one in fifty really give you the right to stop and frisk everybody you see? tricking people into getting drug charges and then becoming felons so that they can't vote to get these things changed. Tricking people into giving up their rights and in, um, criminalizing themselves, but I can't think of the word I'm looking for. If you Whatever. have to bamboozle people... But that's not like a new thing. Cops have been doing that since the ancient fucking times. This Law enforcement has tried to force, coerce confessions you know what and else plant happened? evidence and... You know what else happened in the ancient times? We Since used to get eaten times. by saber-toothed cats. We don't have to worry about that anymore. There was also prostitution, but I'm still for that being around. Me too. So, and also, hey, I like fire. Burn stuff. Fire's pretty cool, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's what separates us from the apes. <laughs> you know what else separates us from the apes, Corey? Um, I'm going to take a guess. That it's um, something to do with some form of a liquid beverage? I think you're right, Corey. I think you know just what's going on. Folks, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Air Radio. We will see you again next week. Don't forget, you can check us out live 8 p.m. on Mondays, airrecradio.com. Follow me. I am AWR Stace Ghost at that on Twitter. Corey is <laughs> at... <laughs> At AWR Stace Coast. I'm at CPay Run. Always follows at Air Rec Radio. And please, I can't stress the website enough. AirRecRadio.com. Please do your best to get your content from the website. If I see that people are going to the website, I will definitely start spending some more time and energy making the website something to go to. So did you get that? Go to AirRecRadio.com. In the meantime, Corey, pour me some sassafras tea, please. It's late in the afternoon. my comforts, taking good care of me, sitting down in my easy chair, taking a sip of my sassafras tea. Now wouldn't you know it, there goes the phone again, it's probably just another wrong number, but someone tried to send me something I
into into uh, um, what the fuck's the word I'm looking for? Um,